Money matters. We needed to pay our bills. We needed to buy our groceries. We needed to keep the never ending supply of boxes showing up at our doorstep. We orient a lot of our time around money. Think about the amount of time that one spends preparing for work, then doing the work they learned about, and then thinking about money, using their money, and worrying about money. Money takes up a lot of mental and emotional space too, whether it is the joy of the ability to do things we couldn't do before, or maybe it's the worry of how it's affecting our relationships, the fear of where the next paycheck is gonna come from, or the ability to pay for things that we truly need. And then there's the desire to do more for others. Money matters. Money matters because money is a matter of the heart. That's why Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Money matters, and money matters to God. Now that sounds like a strange statement, doesn't it? Why would money matter to God? Because we matter to God. And everything that belongs to God, God wants to be sanctified and wholly his, filled with joy and peace and power. And because money touches every part of our life, money is a prime vehicle for either good use or misuse, a use that would take us closer to God or draw us away from God. After all, Jesus said that where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. Now, it can feel a little awkward sometimes to talk about money. It's a subject that sometimes we avoid. But do you know who doesn't have trouble talking about money? God, because it matters to him, because we matter to him. If you look in the Bible, almost 25% of Jesus's teachings involve money. Half of his parables deal with stories regarding property or finances. About 2,500 verses through the course of the entire Bible deal with money. God has a lot to say about money, again, because he cares about us. When our relationship with money is redeemed and rightly ordered, when it takes the proper place in our heart and in our lives, we can experience great joy, great contentment, and we are free to use our money for the greatest good. Well, hi, welcome to session one of our conversation around the field guide for money and faith. My name is Jim. It's my honor and pleasure to be the senior pastor here at First Methodist Church of Albany and a joy to be a companion with you as we explore the riches of practical biblical wisdom and our deep Methodist tradition in terms of money. Uh, this book is a product of our own congregation. It's a 32-page, easy-to-read booklet that distills a wide variety of biblical wisdom, practical wisdom, and Methodist wisdom that will not only teach us a biblical worldview of money, but also give us practical resources on how to unlock the greatest riches of God's desires for our heart. And so I hope you'll join me over the next three weeks. You can get your copy of the Field Guide for Faith and Money through your group leader, the church office, or if you visit our website and click the eBooks tab, you can get a PDF version that you can blow up for a larger print. In this session, I want us to talk briefly about the nature of money and four broad picture biblical concepts that help us begin to orient ourselves properly to money. In subsequent sessions, we'll hear exciting things like John Wesley's three rules for the use of money, and we'll hear practical wisdom both from scripture and our Wesleyan tradition about how to use money. But first, let's talk about the nature of money. Have you ever heard the phrase that money is the root of all evil? I've heard it. I'm sure we all have heard it. Do you know where it comes from? If you said the Bible, uh, you'd be pretty close. It sounds like something that the Bible would say, doesn't it? But actually, if you look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, it reads, For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. You see, money itself is morally neutral. The love of money, however, is the root of all kinds of evil. Money is morally neutral. Now, the way that we acquire it, and the way that we use it can be good 
or it can be harmful, just like many other things in life, the way we come by it and the way we use it. If money is understood properly and used with biblical wisdom, it can be used for all manner of good. Now, I'm sure you can think of many ways and examples for how money could be used for harm. Uh, take the big, splashy ways like embezzlement uh, used to silence and overpower and do violence and injustice to others. There are also more subtle ways, too, like how the love of money can inch its way onto the throne of our heart so that we begin to make unhealthy sacrifices that we wouldn't normally make, like our relationships, like our health and well-being as we work past our human limitations and forsake rest. Money problems can show up in our relationships and they can cause all kinds of stress that affect our entire lives. But if we were to look at the biblical witness for the wise use of money, we could find that it offers us a pathway to great contentment, peace, and powerful forces for good in the world. Now, money itself, as I said, is morally neutral, but money is John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, reminds us that money is actually of unspeakable service, not necessarily value, but it is something that can be used for great good for the kingdom of God. It's used, John Wesley says, for business and reward. It's good for that. It can be used when used in according to Christian wisdom for all manner of good, and it is an excellent gift of God, John Wesley says, answering the noblest ends. And so using money for the wisest and noble ends for good begins with some understanding of four broad biblical truths. Now, I'm going to share these biblical truths with you, and they come uh, from the great witness of Scripture together. We'll be focusing on, especially in our conversations after this video, in the parable of the talents that comes in the Gospel of Matthew. But let's begin with the first truth. God is the source of our money. Now that makes sense. God created something out of nothing. God is the one who creates. God is the source of all things. God is the source of the world and everything in it. God is the source of our lives. And would it not then make sense that God is the source, the cause of everything that we have? Everything that we have comes from God. It doesn't come from ourselves. Now you might say, but I work for my money, and you do. But everything that we create has to come from something that already exists, and that is something that God has already made. For example, God has given us the world to work upon. God has given us bodies and minds to do the work and strength to earn our financial resources. Remember, the Bible says in one of my favorite verses, Acts 17, 28, in him we live and move and have our being. God is the source of everything that we have. When we take that, it leads logically to the second truth. We are stewards of God's money. Consider this verse from Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. Now, think of this verse, Colossians 1, 16, speaking about Jesus. All things have been created through him and for him. And they are God's and they entrust, he entrusts them to us. We are not owners, we are stewards. Everything we possess, including our bodies and our lives, belong to the Lord and are entrusted to us. We are not owners, we are stewards. We take care of what God entrusts to us and we use them well and not for our own purposes, but for the purposes of God. We are like custodians that care for the money that God entrusts to us. Now that has a lot of implications. When we recognize that we are stewards, we become less attached to what we have. It has less power over us. We are more secure in our own being and in the Lord's provision. We know that the God who supplied it in the first place will supply all that we need again in due time. And we are free to share and invest in God's kingdom. And in so doing, we know that we are partaking in the joy of our master. Another biblical truth, God entrusts 
us with money for a purpose, for a purpose. Now, God cares for all of creation, and he entrusts us with resources to express his care on his behalf. And so John Wesley shares that the purpose of our money uh, from his sermon on the use of money is to be faithful stewards by giving to the poor and expending our finances for things needful for yourself and your household. Let me quickly run through a couple of ideas that are associated with that. If you want to be a good and faithful steward, according to John Wesley, here are four things that you would consider. First, to provide for your true needs. I like how he says this, food and clothing of a moderate nature that preserves your body in health and strength. When God cares for creation, that means he cares for you. And part of what he entrusts to you is for you to care for you. Now, second is to provide for your family, for those whom you are responsible for. You are, they are under your stewardship. And so God entrusts you with goods that you would care for them. Third, and this comes from Galatians 6, to do good, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. And fourth, as you have opportunity, do good to all people. You see, God cares for his creation, and that includes you. He, he provides for our needs, not always our wants, but our needs, and entrusts us with even more so that we might feed the hungry, clothe the naked, provide for the needs of those around us. And as we have ability to relieve the wants of as many people as possible. Finally, we are accountable for how we use money. We are accountable for how we use money. Let me share this quote from my dear friend, Roz Picardo's book. He, they, he and his wife write, the end goal of earning money is not simply to buy more stuff, spend frivolously on what we desire, or build up riches to hoard. Instead, money is a tool we use, not one that uses us. Ultimately, God is the one who holds us accountable as stewards. His hope and desire is that we exercise wisdom when it comes to money. We are accountable as stewards. It all flows. God is the source. God entrusts it to us for a purpose, and we are accountable for what we do with it. Consider the parable of the talents in Matthew 25, how the master goes on a journey and he entrusts three of his servants with various sums of money. When he returns, he comes to check on or to hold to account what they have done and what they have earned with those funds. It makes perfect sense. Wouldn't you come back and want to check on how things have gone? That is a moment of accountability. It is an accounting. Now you'll notice that the first servants, when they receive accountability, it is a great joy because they have been good and faithful stewards and they have invested and used what their master entrusted to them for his own gain. And so the master says, you good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of your master. Accountability is a beautiful thing. It helps us achieve goals. It helps us to move forward in the right direction. Accountability only becomes troublesome for us when we either resist it or when we, like the last servant in the story, fail to use what is entrusted to us for the purposes of the one who gave it. You see, the third servant did nothing, nothing with what he was entrusted with. And he was called a wicked servant and he was cast out where there would be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Accountability is a good thing, and we are held to account for what we do with what God entrusts to us. And I know that for me, I seek the joy of a master who is well pleased with what I do with the gifts he's given to me. And so these are some broad biblical ideas that help us situate a biblical worldview of money. I wonder if in your groups, you can consider ways that that's different from the common and worldly or cultural way in which money is often viewed. Well, my friends, continue to dig in. I hope you are blessed as you study and have these conversations with each other. Money matters. Money matters to God. Why? Because your soul matters and all of creation matters. And because God is a good and wise master, he entrusts us with finances and resources that we might take care of everything that he loves. 
Have a wonderful conversation. I look forward to hearing how it goes and we'll see you in session two.